dissect uh, relatively free of uh, free of damaging the any vessels. Okay, now <clears throat> this is a very in that um, although you may look at the CT scan preoperatively and assess that it's completed, and instead some type of a bypass procedure, palliative bypass procedure is required. Okay, so this is one of the first steps. Obviously, um, looking for mesenteric secondaries, uh, sorry, or mental secondaries, um, peritoneal secondaries, peritoneal seedling, liver metastases, uh, would all be indications that uh, you should not proceed with the full repose pancreatic or duodenectomy. Okay, sorry, <coughs> um, people are having some sound issues. So I'm just going to try and improve that. Um, I do have it at maximum. <coughs> um, guys, please uh, try and put up your volume on your side. I'll also just try and speak a little bit louder. <coughs> okay, just uh, let me know how the sound is. <coughs> okay, so that was the importance of the middle colic artery in locating the superior mesenteric artery. Then briefly looking at the lymphatics, um, the lymphatics surrounding the head of the pancreas will typically be removed with the head of the pancreas. Uh, there are extensive lymph nodes running along the splenic artery. If these are found to be enlarged, they may be removed individually. Um, <clears throat> but however, extensive lymph node involvement is also a contraindication to a pancreatic or duodenectomy. Okay, looking at the posterior aspect of the lymphatic chain around the arteries and veins of the head of the pancreas, uh, they basically follow the bile duct, um, also around the uh, hepatic branch of the celiac axis, there are celiac nodes, these can all be removed individually, uh, but in block one would try and remove everything associated with the head of the pancreas. Okay, going into the autonomic innervation, um, I'm not too concerned about this except where we are actually trying to do palliative blocks. Um, this explains why patients typically get back pain and epigastric pain because of the uh, autonomic innervation. And a CT-guided um, ablation of the celiac uh, vein, uh, celiac axis, um, lymphatics, so nervous plexus, uh, can offer the patient some pain relief. Okay, this is what I was talking about, uh, assessing for involvement of the superior mesenteric artery. Um, high volume centers report that involvement of the superior mesenteric vein and portal vein are not a contraindication to proceeding with the Whipple. They would, in fact, remove the involved vein in block with the specimen and then do a bypass um, using a prosthetic graft. Our local policy is that involvement of the portal vein and SMV is um, a contraindication to proceeding. Okay, the um, superior mesenteric vein, this is what we spoke about. Um, the anterior aspect of this vein uh, is relatively free of tributaries. So this image shows the surgeon pushing a swab on the tip of an instrument or peanut. Um, under the uh, pancreas but anterior to the superior mesenteric vein and trying to create that tunnel. And then that one tunnel once created allows the surgeon to transect the body of the pancreas over the SMV and portal vein. Um, this is the image that you're left with. It's important to notice that while there are no anterior tributaries, there are many uh, lateral tributaries which on the side of the resection uh, must be carefully ligated as shown in this schematic. Okay, here we are showing the blunt dissection using a finger. Um, it should be done very carefully. Uh, you should rather carefully try and insinuate a peanut um, posterior to the 
body of the pancreas. And once that's done, um, the finger can be used to gently increase the space um, for transection. Okay, this is just showing the same thing in color, transecting the head of the or the body of the pancreas over the SMV and portal vein. Um, and beware of the lateral branches, both arterial and venous. Okay, this is an operative picture um, showing the resection. Um, can we identify the major anatomical structures labeled in yellow? Starting from the top arrow downward. Um, you just post your answers to uh, me directly. Don't post it to the group. Give other people an opportunity to answer. Waiting for answers. While I'm waiting, uh, I'm just trying to see if I can improve the sound. Please let me know if the sound is improved. I'm increasing the volume. Okay, we've got some answers. Tail of pancreas. Um, well, this will be the transected end of the pancreas. Portal vein, yes. SMV, yes. SMA. Yes, and no, this is the IVC. And so look how close the portal vein and the IVC is, just um, out of interest, not related to this particular operation. This is where a um, shunt is created, a portovenous shunt, right? You can put a graph. This is a um, uh, non-selective shunt. Okay, good. Glad the sound is better. So what we have here is the cut surface of the body of the pancreas. Right? This is the portal vein, superior mesenteric vein, superior mesenteric artery, and this is actually the inferior vena cava. Right? So just see, appreciate how close the portal vein and the inferior vena cava is, and this is what allows you to do a non-selective uh, portovenous shunt for portal hypertension. All right, bleeding varices. Okay, good. Uh, resection of the pylorus. Um, this is, uh, sorry, this is a pylorus preserving. This is slightly different um, in that the pylorus is retained, preserved, and the D1 or junction between D1 and D2 is transected. Okay, this is the uh, classic Whipple's procedure where a distal gastrectomy is performed, just showing uh, all the parts that are resected and what remains behind. And these are important schematics to actually understand uh, the procedure. Um, this is an image of the reconstructions that can be done. So here we've got a loop 
of the jejunum which has been brought up through a retrocolic root and we have a pancreatic or jejunostomy um, end to side then we have a hepatico jejunostomy end to side and then distally we have uh, this is a pylorus preserving so this is a duodeno jejunostomy okay so you can see the number of anastomoses and this is why this is a very difficult operation Okay, so that was um, surgical anatomy. Just going into the actual steps of the procedure. Do we have some time? I think we're going to run a little bit over time. This is really a lot of information here. Um, so this is the endoscopic view that you might find a periampillary tumor uh, which is visible at uh, normal gastroscopy. Um, and this appears to be a forward viewing scope, not a side viewing scope, but this is an abnormality. Uh, pathology typically in periampillary CA is adenocarcinoma, 95%, uh, four different areas, one from the head of the pancreas, two distal bile ducts, three ampulla vata, and for the uh, periampillary duodenum. Treatment is standard Whipple's pancreatic or duodenectomy. Um, this is thought to provide adequate tumor clearance in the case of non pancreatic ampullary tumors because tumor spread is localized. Biopsy proven paraduodenal lymph node is thought by most to preclude curative resection. So if there's paraduodenal lymph node involvement, then you're unlikely to get a curative resection. There's five basic techniques to resect the pancreas. Standard pancreatic duodenectomy, called the Whipples, the pylorus preserving pancreatic duodenectomy. Then you have other resections, such as a total pancreatectomy, a regional pancreatectomy, and extended resection. Okay, this, this lecture will be focusing on the Whipples procedure itself. Um, diagnostic laparoscopy can be used selectively in high-risk patients um, so as to avoid a big laparotomy scar and then having to um, abandon the procedure. So diagnostic laparoscopy is recommended. Um, typically this operation is can be done through an upper midline operation, uh, incision, <coughs> midline laparotomy, but the chevron or um, rooftop incision gives you excellent access to the pancreas. Um, it is a much more morbid procedure because the post-operative pain is quite severe and it limits patient breathing and this can very easily um, result in a uh, basal pneumonia and um, problems with uh, weaning the patient. The <coughs> hepatic flexure of the liver can be mobilized, gallbladder, duodenum and uh, cockers Cockerization of the duodenum should be done. And then we would identify and free up the superior mesenteric vein. Now, please bear in mind that you must um, exclude, uh, like we said, liver metastases, extensive paraduodenal lymph lymphadenopathy. Um, you must exclude SMA involvement and uh, peritoneal seedling um, or mental spread before proceeding with a, an attempted curative resection. Um, we would then proceed to the cholecystectomy and dissect out the portohepatous structures, um, the common bile duct, hepatic artery medially and portal vein posteriorly. Uh, once you've confirmed that the tumor is resectable, you may proceed to divide the bile duct until this point, um, you would still be able to offer the patient a um, palliative bypass if it was found to be resectable. Um, the gastrodenal artery is suture ligated and a clip is applied to identify it so that it can be noted on um, CT or plain x-ray. The stomach is then divided and the ligament of trites and um, uh, the jejunum at that point is mobilized and uh, the jejunum is transected at a convenient point just beyond the 
duodenal jejunal junction. Then we decide on a point of transection over the SMV and secure the pancreatic arcades with a figure of eight suture. Uh, pancreatic, uh, pancreatic arcades refer to those lateral branches that come off the SMA and drain into the lateral aspect of the SMV and portal vein. The pancreas is then divided and the uncinate process is dissected off the retroperitoneum, the SMV and the SMA. The retroperitoneal margin should be marked and um, you would need to send that uh, specifically to the histopathologist to assess for the posterior margin. Uh, once you have confirmed all margins are negative, uh, that is typically with frozen section, you can then begin the reconstruction. Jejunum is brought through the transverse mesocolon to the right of the middle colic vessels. A pancreatico jejunostomy is created, typically end to side, hepatico jejunostomy next, and then a gastro jejunostomy more distally. Mesenteric defects are closed to prevent internal hernias and then you may or may not use drains depending on your local policy. Okay, we've already shown this picture and identified these. Uh, just going through a couple of schematics <coughs> showing um, what is resected and the reconstruction which I showed you in the previous um, lecture uh, slides. Um, this I've already mentioned, thorough abdominal exploration should proceed, precede resection. There is no role for resection in the presence of metastatic disease. Um, exploration includes inspection, palpation of the liver, uh, peritoneal surfaces, periotic lymph nodes and root of the mesentery. Contraindications to proceeding liver metastases um, either palpable or detected on intraoperative ultrasound. Pre-op imaging should have excluded this already. Um, peritoneal seedling, malignant ascites, all contraindications, invasion of the tumor into the retroperitoneum, um, invasion of the tumor into the SMA, invasion of the tumor into the portal vein, and as mentioned, some high volume centers will proceed to in block, uh, resect the portal vein, and then reconstruct it. Um, mobilization of the right colon and hepatic flexures of the colon. We then open the lesser sac which exposes the anterior surface of the pancreas as well as the SMV at the inferior border. The duodenum is mobilized, cockerization of the duodenum until the IVC and renal veins are visualized. Assess the relationship of the tumor to the SMA by palpation. And then cholecystectomy is done to facilitate dissection of the structures in the gastro-duodenal ligament. Thereafter, um, I've already alluded to this. This is a good question. Why is cholecystectomy done in this procedure? It would be possible to um, do a, a cholidoco jejunostomy. Okay, please think about that answer. Um, We'll get back to it. Then the reconstruction rule loop is brought up retrocolic, uh, can be brought up anticolic. Local policy is retrocolic uh, to the right of the middle colic vessels. Um, you can do a roux on y loop. Some surgeons would prefer to do this. Uh, two separate loops, one carrying the uh, pancreatic and biliary juices and the second for the gastrojejunostomy. Okay, then the anastomoses, three of them, pancreaticojejunostomy, hepaticojejunostomy, and gastrojejunostomy. Okay, um, running out of time, I'm just going to now proceed to the video.
is this not starting right? Sorry about that, trying to get going just now. Hmm. This is Okay, so the rooftop or chevron incision, the patient's um, legs are now at the top of the screen. They're moving the camera um, around. This is just the opening up of the abdomen. And that's the stomach clearly visible. Okay, the next step is cauterization of the duodenum. Okay, they have completed the laparotomy and confirmed that there is uh, no metastatic disease, no malignant ascites, no peritoneal seedling, and they are therefore proceeding with cauterization of the duodenum. Um, uh, obviously, the cauterization of the duodenum is not a um, irreversible step. If after cauterization of the duodenum and palpation of the SMA, it is found to be um, encased by tumor, it is possible to stop the procedure at that point. So nothing um, definitive has been done as yet. Okay, that's cauterization of the duodenum. Okay, then cholecystectomy, open up the lesser sac, okay. omentum between the colon, that's the transverse colon there, sorry, stomach there, and transverse colon here. So, this is the cephalic end, that's the caudal end, so that's the transverse colon. And this is the stomach. We're looking from above, proceeding through the gastrocolic ligament of the peritoneum. You'll note that all of this is done with simple diathermy. It's done carefully. There's no need for vessel sealing devices as yet. Right. Carrying on down.
Right, I can't really see the pancreas yet. We're starting to see right into the lesser sac. Careful dissection, sharp dissection with scissors. And bigger branches are ligated, bigger vessels. These are just unnamed vessels. And they dissect the patrogenial ligament. Here they're using an energy device, it's harmonic scalpel. I believe that this could be the gastrodenal duodenal vessel, which is uh, in the gastro um, hepatic or duodenal ligament. I'm dissecting out the rest of the peticoduodenal ligament. The right gastric artery and gastrodenal artery have been transected now. That vessel earlier wasn't the gastrodenal, it was probably an unnamed branch.
Yeah, what they're doing now is <coughs> working on the uh, jejunum, just distal to the hepatical, uh, sorry, to the duodeno-jejunal junction, the ligament of trites. They are opening up the mesentery of the jejunum. They're going to transect the jejunum at this point. to soft bar clamps transecting the jejunum and this is the duodenal end which they're tying off and that's the distal end which will be brought up uh, through the retrocolic root. That is a pylorus preserving procedure. Judenum being transected here. It's the bile duct being identified.
Here are these images that I've showed you already. I'm putting stay sutures on the other side of the pancreas. In this video, they don't actually show uh, the dissection of the posterior aspect of the pancreas, creating that tunnel. And that's pancreatic parenchymal tissue that's been transected. And that's pancreas transected. Going to mobilize the unsinic process. Separate out the caudate process of the pancreas, unsinic processor of the pancreas, and the SMA. And there are some branches coming up the SMA, so a vessel sealing device is used. The leg clip, clip supplied. And the unsinic process and the retroperitoneum um, carefully dissected. And this is the last part of the dissection, which uh, once performed allows the specimen to be removed. Almost away. So there's the cut end of the pancreas, the distal end here, with the ties stay switches. That's going to be anastomosed to the jejun, and there's the specimen removed. Now it's a lot of work for a seemingly small specimen, but. Um, it's all the attachments and connections which and blood supply which take time. And so that's a C of the duodenum with the head of the pancreas completely excised. Some images of the specimen. Okay, now this particular surgeon decided to leave the cholecystectomy towards the end. They do a retrograde cholecystectomy, which means from the fundus down. They've already separated out from the fundus. And that's the cystic duct being transected. And we now are going to do all the anastomoses. And the pancreatic jejunostomy. Um, the mucosa to mucosa anastomosis is preserved, preferred. So,
duct is identified. Carefully dilated. Okay, there's a posterior uh, anastomosis done between the posterior aspect of the pancreas and the loop of jejunum. Uh, this is a cut in the jejunum. So that's posterior end of the pancreas to the serosa of the jejunum. Now they're doing a mucosa to mucosa anastomosis between the mucosa of the pancreatic duct and the mucosa of the jejunum. Right. And then anteriorly they are taking the serosa of the jejunum and anastomosing it to the pancreas. As you know, the pancreas doesn't really have a capsule, which uh, makes this quite difficult. The sutures must be very carefully handled, otherwise they tear. Next is the hepaticojejunostomy. The cut end of the hepatic duct. An incision is made into the side of the jejunum. So this is an end to side anastomosis, full thickness, mucosa to mucosa. three or four minutes of this video left. <clears throat> In this instance, it's a um, duodenal jejunostomy, not a gastro jejunostomy. The jejunostomy being created, so it's an interside anastomosis. Posterior walls are being anastomosed. This is completed. Okay, so that's the Whipple's procedure completed. Just putting a few additional sutures in the serosa layer. Take any tension off the anastomosis. Okay, so this is basically what's been done. And then this is just closure of the abdominal wall and layers. Okay, I'm going to stop the video there. Um, we had one question that we'd asked. Let's just answer that quickly. So why is a cholecystectomy indicated? There's a tendency of gallstone formation, right? And remember that um, you can not do an ERCP in these patients um, because 
Um, it's not possible to get the scope. You can get the scope into the stomach, but it's not possible to uh, get it all the way up. Let's see if I can get a diagram. All right, so basically you would require to do an open cholecystectomy or opened uh, procedure for the stones, and that would be very difficult because of the adhesions. So uh, one registrar had answered correctly. Um, it would be a disaster to go back for anything. Okay, good. Um, guys, if there's any questions, please um, send them through to me. Uh, we're going to have to stop there. We already come to our time of 10 past 8, and we started 10 minutes late. Any questions, please send them through to me. Otherwise, thank you very much, and have a good evening.